it's Doris with All of the Books, and I'm here with a May wrap-up. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to do any wrap-ups for a while, but it just worked out that I finished a lot of books the last week of May, so what can you do? Wrap them up. <laughs> um, the first one I finished was Sight by Jesse Greengrass, and I was buddy reading this with Jacqueline and Carrie Ann, and I got along tremendously with this book. Um, this is one that really depends on your um, personality and your reading style as to whether or not you'll love it or like it even. But yeah, me, I definitely did. I love memoirs and I love nonfiction and I love... Uh, science writing and this just worked for me on all those levels. It really reads like this hybrid of memoir and essay and really thought-provoking. So the themes explored are motherhood, whether or not to be a mother, your relationships with your own mother, new motherhood, it's just amazing and just to think about how those themes interplayed with these um, essay type writings she did a kind of research based writings on um, the first x-rays and um, some things about planetary photographs and um, Freud all kinds of things it really this interested me tremendously, but I would explore it a little more to see if you would like it or not, just depending on what kind of things you like. Uh, and then I decided to go ahead and DNF The Magician, Magicians by Lev Grossman. Uh, I had picked this up for like 85 cents or something, and uh, my high school librarian gave me the audio for free. And, you know, I was really into fantasy for a while, and I still am at times. I like, you know, books about magic. And this one is kind of hyped as more of a college-aged Harry Potter. I just wasn't impressed with the dialogue at all. There's a lot of... There's a lot of teenage angst, a la Catcher in the Rye, that just doesn't work for me. And... I mean, it's just not interesting to me, to be quite honest. And when the professors started dropping the F-bomb during an administrative interview, I just, it seemed like teen angst coming from these aged professors. And no, I just, I don't know. I got more things to read, so moving on. I finished Ann Patchett, her bel canto, beautiful song. Yeah, this was gorgeous. I buddy read this with Jenny King, and it was her second time reading it, and she loved it just as much the second time, and I can see why. The first 100 pages were a little slow, enjoyable, but a little slow, but then, oh, literally, just literally, when the music came back into the story, it just, the story just blossomed. This is very, very much character driven. And Ann Patchett is an author. She reminds me of Barbara Kingsolver. Barbara Kingsolver's books always tend to be um, based in the social or environmental issue, very much so. Ann Patchett's books do too, but she has got a much more delicate touch with that. So this story is based in South America, you're not told what country, but basically all of these different peoples, business peoples and diplomats from different countries, different languages that they speak, end up at the vice president's house for a birthday party for a Japanese businessman. They're trying to, the country's trying to recruit businesses to invest in their country. And they've invited a world-renowned opera singer to sing at the party and that's how they got the Japanese businessman to come because he's this great opera buff and that sounds I mean that's a weird storyline and then they get um, 
they become hostages. Um, a rebel group comes in, takes them all hostages, and it's just about their relationships. They stay there over a month um, being held hostage with these um, rebel soldiers, and they all develop relationships with each other, and it's just fascinating to read them, and very, very enjoyable. And the social aspect that you see is this stark dichotomy between the super wealthy and the poverty stricken. And she just paints that beautifully, so beautifully. Great read, great read. Uh, and then another great read. There's going to be a lot of those here. River of Doubt by Candice Millard. I buddy read this with Heidi and we had a bang up time reading it. This is a nonfiction. It is Teddy Roosevelt um, did an expedition up a tributary, an unexplored tributary of the Amazon. Barely came out with his life and that of his son. And this was uh, right after he lost for his third term in office. I couldn't believe that, you know, a former president of the United States was just sent off, allowed to do this. I mean, I guess you can do what you want, but in modern times, I just don't see this happening. But this was fascinating if you love, this is a new subgenre that I found called adventure nonfiction, and I am just all there for it, all there for it. And then I finished another great read. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, if some of you are interested in me or Elizabeth Gaskell, you may recall that I didn't get along with North and South quite as much. I mean, it was fine, but it was a little too romantic with a capital R for me. I thought the male lead was just so melodramatic. Um, but this one was absolutely delightful from start to finish. I love the characters. I love their interplay. I love the town. This is a Victorian read set in, I guess, a middle class group of little town. You have, you know, your random nobles family that lives there that comes and visits and ooh, and the central character is the doctor, Dr. Gibson, and his daughter, Molly. And as she becomes an older teen, he realizes that she needs a mother figure in her life and ends up marrying and introduces a stepsister, Cynthia. And it's about the relationship between Cynthia and Molly and all the other people in their lives. It's just delightful. If you want to get into Victorian literature, this is where I would tell you to start because I just thought it was lovely and very readable. And then I knocked out Ethan Frome. This is a tiny novella. This one I did not get along with as well, but it, as well, not at all really. It was 77 pages and I wouldn't fault the text. It's very bleak and that's not, you know, what I didn't like about it. Bleak is fine. But this centers around um, issues between a couple and a third woman in the scene and that just doesn't always interest me. I don't like marriage problems in literature all the time. Uh, and I just I didn't see anybody trying to make it better. Uh, so yeah, didn't do it for me. This one was more interesting, Daisy Miller by Henry James, another little novella. And I thought Daisy Miller, her, um, she's, she's traveling in Europe with her mother, way less supervised than she should be, uh, typical of the time of American persona in Europe, um, just very brash. I loved her personality. The ending was a little off. I think they were trying to make a point there, but... I didn't think making it with, you should have had a real gentleman to keep you from the mosquitoes was the way to go with that. <laughs> anyway, and then we'll wind up the week with another great one, Evicted by Matthew Desmond. 
Poverty and Profit in the American City. This is research by a Harvard sociologist, but it's, it's personal research. He spent time a year and a half living uh, with the poverty-stricken African-American community and the poverty-stricken white community in um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He actually lived in those environments and met people and essentially became kind of a part of their lives in a, in a kind of a distant way, but still very close to the source and just recorded their lives and what it was like with all their evictions and it's just, it was a hard read. It's hard to read about all of the problems that they faced in these environments and how hard it was to get homes and also to watch the poor decisions they made and how hard it was to recover from those decisions. I mean, the more poor decisions you make, the harder it is to ever recuperate from them, even when you try. And just, you know, lacking the, the support to even know how to try. So yeah, this was really, really eye-opening and thought-provoking read. And looking forward to Robert Horde's this is one of his read-alongs. I think this one is posted tomorrow, and Ethan Frome was already posted, and that one was very interesting, so I'm looking forward to this one as well. So, yeah, May was a great reading month, and now I'm off to June. Thanks for watching, and I'll chat with you soon. Bye.